Welcome to another edition of the Empower Hour. I am Al Kumar. And I am Hanifa. <laughs> I don't think they could see me. I'm sorry. And we do this each and every Wednesday from 2 to 3 p.m. where we come to you with impactful topics of discussion that affect our everyday lives. Today will be no different. Um, we are alone in the studio today. Hello. Just Hanifa and I. Just me and you. <laughs> so, and all of you, of course, because we want you in on the discussion. The Facebook family, the Instagram family. So please join yes. this discussion on generational curses. And it's been a lively discussion already on my um, homepage on Facebook. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so I'm definitely going to get some of those comments in on the discussion about this topic today. Generational curses. That word, and I went back and forth yeah. with that word because yeah. I did come up with the title. Uh -huh. And uh, remember, because I, I, first I post, um, I shared with you um, generational um, patterns. Yes. yes. And then I said, but you know what? Let me just stick with curses because that could be a topic of discussion. Mm -hmm. You know, because a lot of people don't agree with that term. And I understand why. Mm -hmm. I think we should get into that as well. So, yeah. Generational curses slash patterns. What's your thoughts on? No, when you mentioned curses, I was just thinking, I feel like there's a religious aspect to that. I okay. think that that is the way that the church uh, tends to define mm -hmm. what, we, what we consider pathologies, DNA memory, cycles. You know, I think it's just another word because yeah. it's, it's almost like um, how people would say, God in yeah. one culture and there may be a whole different name but when you get down to the characteristics you realize that they're both talking about God right and so curses whatever we choose whatever wording we choose to define it um, I think it depends on the context in yeah. which that word was defined I and agree. I think curses is more connected to the religious aspect of it Christianity particularly yeah. uh, because that's a part of our history as yeah. black people. Yeah. I agree with that. And again, that's why I didn't want to take that word completely out of the equation altogether because it, it means different things for different people. Yes, yes. So um, I just want to define the term curse. Mm -hmm. um, the Webster's de de definition is this, a prayer or invocation for harm or injury to come upon one. Imprecation, people believe that there is a curse on the house. That's a, you know, sentence. A profane or obscene oath or word in an antechamber, such as his lieutenant suddenly heard the shattering of glass and angry curses. Mm -hmm. And then a, a second form of terminology said it was a cause of great harm or misfortune. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. And so can... So again, I think the term curse. I think it can be a little bit triggering, particularly for black people, because we, our blackness yeah. has been labeled a curse yeah, yeah, for yeah, so yeah, long. Yeah. And so I think we kind of shy away from using that word as it pertains to like describing what our experiences has, be, yeah. has been yeah. as far as like cyclical things, you okay. know, things that we see happening from generation to generation. I think we're very careful with that, but I, I feel like we know what we're talking about right. no matter what terminology we choose to use. Right. Yeah. Right. We're still talking about the same thing. We understand yes. that. However, is that, because, you know, we, we, tend, we, we tend to use the word curse mm -hmm. as we relate to words mm -hmm. themselves. Exactly. So here we are mm -hmm. using the word curse. Mm -hmm. Is that a curse word? Right. You know? Right. So I don't know. I don't right. know. I don't have all the answers. Right. I don't even have a one. I don't even lean one way or another towards it. I'm just here to learn and, and get better understanding. I'm, I'm just like curse, cycles, pathologies. Patterns. Patterns. Whatever you want to call it. Let's just have the conversation. I love it. Yeah. Let's do it. Okay, tell us what you guys think about the, the word, I mean, the, um, the title, Generational Curses. Um, you want to start with some su su suggestions of ideas of where you think that... Well, I, I, I would start off by saying when you just went over this definition of curse, yeah. right? 
So when we talk about generational curses, what we're, when curses, what we're talking about is pre pretty much things that have been passed on from generation to generation to generation. And if we understand how culture is formed, you know, culture is formed through repetition of, of something till it eventually that thing becomes the norm until that norm becomes culture. Mm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And so when we're talking about generational curses, that's what we're talking about things that are within our so-called culture that we, ha we deem normal, we deem black. And we're saying no, because sometimes it is, uh, we are holding on to it and we are owning it to our own detriment. So that's what we're talking about today. All right. Am, I, am I on? I agree. Okay. I agree wholeheartedly. Um, okay, I'll start with one what I think um, could be considered a curse. Beating our children and calling it spanking. Don't get me started. <laughs> Beat them. What's your thoughts around family? What's your thoughts around beating children? Is that a generational pattern? Is that a, uh, is, it, is it dysfunctional? Or is it beneficial? Is that part of our culture? Hey. Help me out, family. You know, I'm still, I just started doing some in-depth research about this. And, and that's mainly because I am going to embark on a path of teaching parenting classes. Yeah. And I think teaching parenting classes to black people, this is a topic that has to be addressed. Yeah. Right? So I've been doing some research. I'm not, I have not come to a conclusion as yet. And part of that research is to, to see what, how were children treated? How were they disciplined? I think that's the key, right? Um, I personally think that we cannot talk about violence against black bodies and not talk about corporal punishment. I personally feel that's my opinion. It is definitely a controversial topic because it is something that is ingrained in us. Um, we actually think that we should, we should do it, and we actually expect it to be done to us. What? Be Beaten. Beat children. Yes. Okay. You okay. know what I mean? Yeah. And so if you're expecting it as a child growing up, you become an adult that, is, that thinks that that is expected of you yeah. as part of your parenting. A pattern. Yes, it is. Exactly. It is a pattern. Um, I, I think we should get away from it as much as possible. I think that black people, and I, I put this at stat, as one of my statuses, I think we are brilliant and creative enough mm. to tap into and to seek out other alternatives to disciplining our children. I personally think that um, corporal punishment or beatings uh, is rooted in our, our oppressor's treatment of us. Mm. I personally believe that, yeah. in the, and especially in the way that we do it, because we do it as a form of control. Yeah. You know, I am talking to this child, and I'm trying to teach this child, and I feel like they are not doing what I need them to do right this minute. Yeah, 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 yeah. Right? Um, and so it's, it's, it's kind of like an immediate fix, yeah. which was done to our ancestors to keep them in line. And I wonder, is it healthy? Is it helping? And I always, you know, is it, is it helping us? Is beating our children helping us, uh, our children become better adults? No, because I, I, I would dare say let's go in the corners and talk to mm. people out there. Let's talk to the people who are creating chaos in our communities. Let's talk to the people who have actually committed crime. I'm not talking about mass incarceration for a profit here. I'm talking about men, black men and women who have actually committed crimes. Let's talk to them, and I can guarantee you that probably 95% of them were whooped and probably got the scars to show it. Mm. So the que to answer your question, no, mm. it's not working. Yeah, yeah. And so, again, I, you know, that's why I like these type of discussions because it opens up the mind to different alternatives. Yeah. You know, yeah. it really does. Yeah. I think I, I always like to go back, always like to go back. So I wonder, like, how did our... Way, 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 way back in the before day, sl slavery. Before mm -hmm. that's what I'm looking at. Offer, mm -hmm. How did they uh, raise and rear children? Was it what did they beat children mm -hmm. back then? You know, I don't know. Like I said, I don't have all the answers. Mm -hmm. But what I do know is that I've done some study on how a lot of um, 
how they um, reprimanded children was through um, ostracization, ostracization yeah. mm -hmm. and isolation mm -hmm. from the community, mm -hmm. from the village. Which mattered to children. That's right, which matters now. N to a lot of our kids. Which probably. matters now. Yeah. It depends on how you raise them because a lot of us are raising our kids separate from the village. We are raising our children in a very oh. individualistic manner, right? Well, I, so okay. we, the only person we, we're probably scared of disowning us is the person raising us. Yeah, we're we're not concerned about elders because that, that village piece has been broken. We're, we're getting back to it and I think we need to work harder as far as getting back so that this can be a thing where they're like, oh my gosh, my but family. But even the village within the whole, own home, mm -hmm. I'm thinking it matters. It definitely matters. Like say, take a for instance, mm -hmm. um, a child is cutting up, you know, and you, you, um, y'all are on y'all way to Chuck E. Cheese mm -hmm. or something, the whole family. And you tell that child, you know, you, you're not going. Mm -hmm. You're going to your aunt's house mm -hmm. and stay with her because we're going to have a good time. And because because of what you this, that or another, you don't deserve to have, you know, to mm -hmm. be with us as we go out on this family outing. What do you I think that's what you're gonna saying. do to that mm -hmm. child? I got you what ain't saying. put your hands on that child, you ain't cursed that child mm -hmm. out, but you isolated them from the from the village, from the family. I I I for me it's uh, the way that we the way that I see us Disciplining our children mm -hmm. is is uncalled for. Yeah, it really is. It, it, I mean, it really is like switches and belts and sticks oh, and throwing. No, I'm saying and throwing things at them and like straight up fist fighting. Yeah. Our children, yeah. is, there is no justification for that. Right. There is none. I don't care how you put it. Slapping them upside their head. There is face. no justification for it. And you know what? This idea that we have of where you can show a bruise uh, that your parent may have given you. And you're, you can look at that bruise and say, well, if my parent wouldn't, would, would, didn't beat me like this, I would, I would turn out differently or something. Maybe you turned out differently in spite of. Maybe. You know, we don't consider that. Right. Because there are those cases. Like, let me see. I just saw a, a comment. Some, somebody said, if that's the case, successful people were disciplined too. But that is not our argument. Our argument as black people to encourage, the con to continue to beat our children is, for example, if they see a child cutting up in the store, yeah. oh, that's because they don't beat them. That's yeah. what we're talking about today. Yeah. Yeah. So Nadir Cook says, we can appeal to our children through the kinetic energy. Of course, we must start early, though. Yes. Yeah, that's a good point. And, and Nadir, you might have to break down kinetic energy um for, for some so that we you know they see us can understand um nadia says she always says beating children instead of spanking them is very different beating children to me is part of the stockholm syndrome that's what our oppressors did to us what is the difference between beating and spanking are they is both are they both hurting the child yeah well not well yeah i mean but <laughs> Two different degrees, though. What's what's the you goal? Beat a child to a pulp, and you can slap yeah. a child's hand. Yeah, but they're it. both painful. And what is the goal of that pain mm -hmm. that you are uh, uh, give, yeah, uh, uh, inflicting on that child? What is the goal? Is there another way to reach that goal? Good point. Good point. Outside of inflicting pain. Good That's my. I, I ch like. I'm open to having the conversation and seeing different perspectives. I already know how I feel about it. Yeah. It doesn't mean that I can't see other people's pers perspective, yeah. but I personally just feel it's a conversation that we, we, need to, we need to really have so that we can start coming up with some other alternatives and start looking for some other tools yeah. and start offering yeah. some other tools. That sh why is that our plan A? And why is it always connected to how we behave? You know what I mean? You're behaving like that because you wasn't beaten as a child. Really? Mm. Mm. Is that really the reason why you're behaving like that? Really? Or is that just the response to your behavior? Right. Good point. Uh, I just, my own personal story, my, I grew up in a household, um, my father never spanked. I remember one time being spanked by my father. Um, me and my sister were playing on the phone, calling 
911. <laughs> and uh, I'm sorry, no, calling the operator. Back when you can dial zero. Yeah, uh -huh. and, hanging and up. hanging up. And the operator called back, got my father on the line. He got so upset. He spanked me and my sister. That's the only time I ever remember being spanked by my father mm -hmm. in all my life. Mm -hmm. But I had the utmost respect for that man. He could mm -hmm. just look. He could mm -hmm. just give me a certain look. Mm -hmm. And my heart would just break in mm -hmm. 10 different pieces. Mm -hmm. So I think it was this respect level I had for him that made me want to do right by him. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. now my mother, my mother was the one who spanked us and my father didn't, he wasn't opposed to mm -hmm. you know, her spanking us. And she did the spanking and she didn't, you know, she wasn't no abusive mother who beat us mm -hmm. for every turn, mm -hmm. but she did do a lot of the spanking in the household. But I just thought that that was, um, you know, interesting to share how mm -hmm. I didn't get beat, beatings from my father, but the respect level for him was just astronomical mm -hmm. to the roof. So he didn't need to. He could talk to me. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? He could look at me a certain way, and I, you know, I shape up. Yeah. Yeah. I just, I, for me, like I said, I just, my thing is let's talk about what is the goal? What is the goal of you? beaten spanking what is your goal yeah. and if there is there another way to reach yeah. that goal i actually think it's a shortcut yeah. i think beating children is a shortcut it's a trigger and it's, it's a, a triggered response a right lot of and times. then we, a lot of times we cannot parent in the now only meaning like our 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 view and our goal of parenting have to go beyond eight nine it have to be real futuristic so when you when you teaching a child it can't be as far as the outcome now yeah. it's what lessons am i giving them as far as the future what is it that i'm looking for what type of adult am i raising you right. know what i mean right right all right well let's move on you got one or you want me to move on to another one on my list um we, we could oh uh -huh. that's probably a lot of no go ahead stuff. go ahead um, what I consider low degrading names we use for ourselves and each other, mm -hmm. like the B word, ho, N word, the nigga, all that stuff. Mm -hmm. Is that, is, could that be considered generational curses? No. Are they curse words? Was that, what is this? Okay, so then, see, when you, when you say that, when we, when we are, uh, refer to each other like that if we go further back like 60s 50s was that an issue were, were our ancestors then referring to each other then I mean in that manner I don't think as much I don't think as I don't think it's be, it's become like um it's like a greeting it's like a term of endearment right. it has become that that's when you know now it's normalized right 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 so that's what i'm saying i guess I'm, I'm trying to figure out is it considered a generational oh pattern if oh I it's got something you. that maybe started recently i got you you know what i mean i feel I like you. these things here this particular thing is like a more recent thing i got you you know what i mean yeah 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 so, I, I'm not, I mean i feel like if we don't address it if we don't change it now it will that's it will it will be of course cyclical of course yeah yeah is it a, is it a word that lifts us words let's take the n-word let's take the n-word for for family is that a beneficial word is that a word <laughs> of endear you know a term that actually um um lifts us yeah or does it bring us down low you know this morning i was i was running late today coming here <laughs> mm -hmm. but this morning before i left out i was uh talking to Nick, Nigasi, just playing with him just playing with him and it, it it just dawned on me that you know what the importance of naming our children mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and how when you choose to name a child right so alkama mm -hmm. what does your name mean the moon the moon Okay. Malik? King. Yeah. King. So, you're a woman. But let's say we have a Malik that's a man, okay. a boy. Every time I say, Malik! Mm. Teach on that. Tie your shoes. Malik! Teach on that. 
sit down. Malik, Teach. The, you know, so every time Good I say teaching. that, I sh it should be, it's, it's just speaking something over that child's life. That's right. When I, when I talk to my son, Negasi, Negasi means destined to be crowned. Every time I say Negasi, I am speaking that thing. I am prophesying that thing. I am calling that thing for, out over his life every single time. So I use that as an example to say, what does nigga do? Jesus Christ. What, do, what does it do? This idea of us taking this name and owning it and making it ours, it's not ours to begin with. Hmm. There are some things that we should not want to own. Yeah, and why? Why do we want to hold on to a word like that so tightly? Why? I don't know, Alcoma. Why do you think? I think it's, it's, I think it's, um, what do they call it? It's a dissonance. It's a, it's mm. a form of dissonance. I don't even think we really realize that we, the damage we do to our own souls and beings, because it's become such a pattern. It's mm -hmm. such a habit. And so it's, 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 it's not even conscious anymore. We just do it. I, you know, I think if we, if we could get to understanding our goddess and God's essences, right? Like essence. Like if we could understand that we have the power to give life, to create life or death. If we could understand the power, the power of, the of the tongue. tongue. If we could understand the power of words. We were talking about curses, right? If we can understand our own divinity. Yeah. Right. Then that trickles over to how we say, what we say, when we say. And a good point to that is we know when to say it. Mm -hmm. You ain't going to go up in the White House saying, hey, what's up, my aunt? What's up, my You're mm -hmm. not going to do that. Mm -hmm. So you give a level of respect to certain people mm -hmm. that you don't give to yourself mm. and, your, and your peers. You know when it. You ain't going to go on a job interview and there's a European stand, sitting there asking you questions and you're going to be like, well, you know what, though, my end? Or even, you're even, not going to do even that. Even a black person interview you. Yeah. So you, in, that, in my mind, that allows me to know that you, you, you use the word um, with people you don't use the word with people that you that you hold in high that you uh -huh. hold in high regard and shouldn't and, high and that so there we go we're so getting do you to hold yourself we're, yeah in high regard and, and high if standard? you don't hold yourself in high regards you cannot hold your own reflection in high regard yeah. if i don't see myself as a black woman mm. above the word bitch mm. then i cannot see you above that mm. you know what i mean mm. so it still boils down to self Love or self-hate? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, the fact that you would consider yourself with pride a female dog. Right. Right. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Says to me, that's how you feel about yourself. Mm -hmm. You really feel that you are a dog. So is it now, I'm going to play devil's advocate because we have some people who feel like we can either give or take power away from words. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. What do you think about that? So there, there people are like, no, you feel that way about the word because you give too much power to it. You know what I mean? You know, I think that's a, that could be a form of an excuse okay. to keep doing the pattern, to keep down the same road that we've always been because the, a bitch in, is a female dog. Yeah, it is what it is. It is what mm -hmm. it is. So, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So it's, yeah, it's still, it's still, that's still the terminology. Mm -hmm. That's still the word. And that's still the word that you would recognize for a female dog. Mm -hmm. So let's see family. Let's get the family in on a discussion. I wanted to share so we ha go ahead. some of the things that, um, going back a little to the terminology curse, I asked a question on Facebook this morning. A few people responded. Um, I asked did they think that um, we were cursed, and, and if so, what did that mean? Generationally cursed. And Saladin Amar Muhammad said, generational curse can come from parents being in rebellion to the law and will of God. 
and passes that same mindset and behavior down to their children and future generations, like rejecting unity. He says, the Bible teaches that cursing shall be upon those who are children from the third and fourth generations who reject truth and righteousness and God guidance. And it teaches that blessings from obedience to God will, with God's will is what removes the generational curses. Going back to your first point mm -hmm. about a lot of people see curse as like a religious term. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. so that's pretty much what he was saying. Rhonda Sekmont Ra mm -hmm. said, we talked about this last night in my sister circle. I think it's more generational patterns than generational curses. Mm -hmm. Curses implies that there is not much we can do about it, but really it's just learned behavior and cycles that can be broken by changing our thoughts, feelings, and behaviors. Mm -hmm. What you think about that? Yeah, I, I agree with I agree with Rhonda on that on that one as yeah. well. Um, but I don't know that curse implies that. I think that uh, curses can be undo undone yeah. as well. So that's why I said it still goes back to the terminology is like if you say curse i say patterns we are talking about the same thing yeah like let's just like we need to just focus on that because as soon as you say generational curses uh rhonda has just given another language to that right yeah to say like you said patterns right cycles right, right. we we hear cycles a lot um but it's the same thing we're having the same conversation right so that's that's me. That's I, I could sit on in a group that use generational curses all day and every day, and they use that terminology, and I could sit in there and still discuss gener generational patterns. And it'd be because the same it's still thing. this. We're talking about the same thing. It'd be the same. Absolutely. Thing. Yeah. Curses to me also imply a spiritual aspect to it, which I think is is a real thing too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because mm -hmm. we're spirit. We're, I feel I, I believe we're spirit beings as well. Yeah. Yeah. I think of voodoo. Mm. You know, now some people really, you know, believe that voodoo works. Mm -hmm. You know, you spells, mm -hmm. casting you. spells on, on people mm -hmm. and you can do certain things or, 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 or pray certain ways mm -hmm. and those spells appear. So when you think about like voodoo seances or even let's go back to the, the Christian church and, mm -hmm. and some, you know, and you, the Holy Ghost, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? I've seen people catch a Holy Ghost in church and I've seen people catch a ghost at, at, at voodoo seances, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and they look the same to me. Mm -hmm. So. It's still the spirit realm. Yeah. Yeah. It's interesting. You're still dealing with the spirit realm. Yeah. What y'all think? What y'all think? Um, most of the qu most of the responses um, we are talking about, they're still on the, um, was about these, the spanking and beating. Yeah. Yeah. Um, one of the other the, the patterns mm -hmm. uh, that I that I definitely is big on is dietary norms I guess <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah Ooh. yes yes um, Ooh, and 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 sicknesses up. diet and sicknesses to where we are we have accepted that oh this runs in my family so it is i'm what going it is. to get it anyway it is what it is i've been eating this all my life yeah my grandparents ate it all their lives and they they lived to uh, to to see 90 something years old you know but let me let's go let's go let's dig into that though okay let's dig into mm -hmm. that point in particular because i've actually thought a little hard on that and i was like but you know what though there's some truth to that, though. Is it? You can have somebody that eats health as what we consider healthy Absolutely. as a horse mm -hmm. and die early. And then you can find somebody smoking, drinking, eating hog moles, mm -hmm. chitlins, and they're 100 years old. Mm -hmm. That's real. I mean, is that a, is that a uh, what is the word I'm looking for? To the rule. Something to the rule. Is exception? Exception. Is that an exception oh. to the rule? No, that's that's the question. <laughs> is oh. that the majority of the time that we're seeing that, or we're just using small cases to justify it? To yeah. say you got three out of a hundred people, and you and you gonna always have someone that holds on to those three people True. and be like, "Well, my grandmother or these people to justify their position or to maintain 
you know, a, a mediocre way of living, honestly. That's how I see it. Yeah. Now, I personally believe in personally believe in holistic health. Yeah. Holistic health so do I. does not involve diet alone. True. I think that you can eat properly and healthy and still t and stress could still take you out of this world early. Early. And I think that's a part True. of it that a lot of people forget. Yeah. We get so focused on the diet part, but we're not taking up taking care of ourselves. It, as far as stress, we're not managing our stress. Our energies. Yes, we are, we are not balance. managing our stress. Yes. Yeah. So we are burning ourselves out, but we still stuck on will I eat healthy or you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, that's why I think like meditation. Yeah. When I hear people say they do meditation, yoga, that's all of that. Yeah. Is a part of holistic health. And I'm definitely not advocating out there, family, that we just eat whatever and do whatever. Yeah. I'm just, I just I really want to be mm -hmm. realistic about the situation, cause. You know, it's true. Now, are they in, in In your generation. Okay. Right? Mm -hmm. How many old people you know like that? No, it's truly. And then count how many old people you know just passed on because of heart failure and that kind of other stuff. Yeah. Do they, are they equal, Alkamar? Really? No. We know they're not. No, no. You, you, you know, it's just diseases alone. You know, it's diseases. When I think of people who have heart disease and diabetes and high blood pressure and stuff like that, it's usually the ones who um, eat the most unhealthiest things. Yeah, and I want to be clear uh, that the life that, our, and the work that our ancestors did yeah. in the hot sun and all of that, yeah. even though they would eat like, we're not doing that. We are eating unhealthy and we're driving to everywhere we go. <laughs> Yeah. We're not walking anywhere. Yeah. Some of us are barely outside. A lot right. of us are couch potatoes. Yeah. Like, there's so many Even different. Right now, I will say that our ancestors probably had, if not more, same amount of stress mm -hmm. under the conditions mm -hmm. that they found themselves. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And even then, like, how which and how many are you counting? Uh, when you do the math, one yeah. like one still outweighs the other, and yeah. that is the one where we're dying young out here. Yeah, we really are. Oh, that's that's proven. Yes, that's a proven fact. Yeah, that's so so if, so are we going to continue to point at our great 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 grands, or are we going to deal with what we're what we're seeing now and what we're witnessing now? Yeah. And what we're witnessing now is there has to be a change. There yeah. needs to be a change. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. I agree. I mean, yeah, you know. What I'm so saying? that's one of the things that I think that we need to really change. Mm -hmm. You know, we need to break the cycle of unhealthiness that we are that we have now normalized yeah. as you know you know you have people say you're not black if you don't eat a b c d yeah but you know there's a dialysis clinic on the corner of every yes. hood in america because somebody ex is exploiting your sickness yeah 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 and then we and now instead of wondering well, how do we get there we just go and take the medication mm -hmm. we just go to the clinic mm -hmm. Cause the clinic's right there on the corner yeah but not even getting down to the root cause of why we got to go inside that clinic to begin with yeah and nine times out of ten it starts with food yeah yeah it starts with food it travels so that's, to that's... energy levels yeah yeah because Sorry. a lot of times um if you're eating bad and thinking function functioning internally bad with your thoughts and behaviors mm -hmm. that's a double whammy yeah 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 okay what else you got um drug addiction hmm. <laughs> what was that <laughs> no i'm saying generate is that a generational curse is that a I, is that a pattern a, a pattern it can be pathology pathological I'm, yeah, pathological thank yeah, you I, <laughs> <laughs> in families okay true alcoholism and yes. drug addiction yes. you know you can have like parents and grandparents or whatever you were alcoholics yeah and now here's the child the alcoholic too yeah and there has been studies done in the past to prove that a person who comes from a, 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 a parent or parents who are alcoholics their alcohol intake mm -hmm. um it, it, it changes, like the DNA cycle changes. So you and I can sit and take the same amount of alcohol, mm -hmm. but it's going to affect you differently than it would me. Mm -hmm. We have the same weight size, all mm -hmm. that, but it's going to affect you differently because your father was a drunk. Mm -hmm. And I there's been studies saying. to mm -hmm. prove that. So that's that's cyclical. Yeah. 
Yeah. And but it's interesting how s some of us who break those patterns and others carry yeah. them on. And I, I actually I'm not sure like I'm I think I'm struggling excuse me. Okay. I'm struggling excuse me, I'll come off. Sorry. Okay. Um I'm struggling I, I think more so with the alcohol piece or is it the behavior itself? Because I feel like we take on certain behaviors as far as our parents, their parents, just through like their, their, them raising us, uh, us observing, this is how you do this. This is how you treat women. This is how you treat men. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. This is what you do when you're stressed. You drink. Right. This is what you do when... When you first wake up. Yeah. You know what I mean? So you I'm like, is it the behavioral it. patterns that's being um, emulated or is it the alcohol connected to the whole DNA piece. You know what I mean? Like, I guess that's where I'm like yeah. still, yeah, my mind is trying to <laughs> yeah. yeah, process that. I'm sorry, yeah. Yeah, but it's, it's an interesting dynamic how some, some of us like take drugs, for example, mm -hmm. so you watch your parents or you, you watch your mother mm -hmm. strung out on mm -hmm. drugs all your life. Mm -hmm. She may even die, have died from an overdose mm -hmm. or something early or mm -hmm. something. And then you become a drug addict. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, wow, you know what I'm saying? You, you saw how damaging this behavior can be, but yet you still chose to participate in mm -hmm. it. What's that about? Mm, I'm not sure. What's that about, family? Well, even like when people be like, you're not going to be like your mother or your father, and then you find when you have kids, <laughs> You're becoming just like them. Yeah. You know, I'm not even... I'm, That's what I mean. I'm wondering yeah. if it's even... A, a point in our mind that it goes to maybe it's, the subconscious it's, right it's no longer even a conscious behavior it's right just a pattern that you've always seen you've always experienced and now here it is you experience it in your own life I don't know I don't, say I don't have all the answers no so I just think that you know we we uh, we should have these kind of discussions because they're important because then we can actually think about it yeah. instead of just reacting right or just you know yeah. going on with our lives and a behavior we actually thinking about what's what's what we doing yeah yeah I, I think sorry go ahead uh, I just I had I had another another one was mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> um. Oh. The perpetuation of limited uh, opportunities for black people, for black people, and I'm give you an example. Yes, please. <laughs> so I'm five nine. Yeah. My son's father is six five. Mm -hmm. People see him now, and it's like he's long. I don't see it, but they see it. But I know that he's gonna have some height to him, right? I find myself saying that, yeah. You're going to be tall, but we're going to be, we're going to raise you to where your intelligence is taller than your height. Mm -hmm. So that when they come to you and they say, you should play basketball, mm -hmm. you take it as an insult. Mm -hmm. But we do that to our own children too. Mm -hmm. You know that, what I mean? The, the first thing came to my mind before you even said the word basketball was yeah. basketball. Yeah, that's a bit like, it's like height is the equivalent of, you know, basketball player yeah. in in our community and i think that we we um wow. we set the standard as parents yeah. as adults as the village as far as our children and how far they can go yeah and i think that we need to leave the ceiling wide open yeah and tell them don't don't even see the sky as the limit mm. try going even beyond that that's good stuff the sky is somebody limit it don't have to be yours. That's real good you know stuff. what I mean? And I, I think how we talk about our children, uh, to our children, how we talk about them in front of them, how we affirm them or don't affirm them, all of that matters. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, I agree. Positive self-image is one of those things I feel like is a generational pattern. I mean, p negative self-image is a generational pattern. Oh, yeah. You know what I mean? Oh, no the color of one's skin. Yeah you know, is going to determine how far they get in life. Well, and, we sh and we inject, we give them these messages from very young. And this is why we're dealing with colorism to this day. And that's why we're dealing with generational poverty to this day. Yes. That falls right into what you're saying. Mm -hmm. Explain that. Poverty, because it's, it's a state of mind. Yes. 
poverty is a state of mind, yes. you know, first and mm -hmm. foremost. First, first. Everything mm -hmm. is a thought, and, it, it, and mm -hmm. you know, it display, displays itself, you know, through your thinking. Sorry. And so when I think of generational poverty, I right. think of the expectations of those who are poverty stricken. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So I think that a lot of instances, if your mama and father was poor, and your grandmother and grandfather was poor, and your great great, yeah, expected to be poor. Yeah. Yeah. Because it's like, if, if poverty is the state of mind now, what are you giving? Or what? How can you give a child more than what? you have given yourself. But even the crab in the barrel mentality that we often see amongst ourselves, I always question that. Because if, if, you, can, if you can make a mistake in public, mm -hmm. we say, oh, they're embarrassing us. Yeah. Why is that not applied when someone is succeeding? You know what I mean? Oh, they're representing us. Why is it, why is it that sometimes people, the people that, the people who are succeeding get the most difficulty from the people that look like them. Okay. You know what I mean? Okay. Where it's almost like, how dare you go further than me? Further than me. How dare you leave me behind? Why can't you attach yourself to that person and say, yes, we winning? Mm. So you say hating is a poverty mindset? I, I think so. It's almost mm. like if I'm in, like I think we mm. hold each other back. And again, it's 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 in we're self-inflicted um, pain. Mm -hmm. It's self-hate. Mm -hmm. It's connected to all of that. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, because I see so somebody else's success makes you uncomfortable. Yeah. Because you feel like you can't get it yourself. Right. You can't achieve those levels. Right. We see that a lot, and we see that a lot. We wow. we the the comments about our appearances, the yeah. comments about our complexion. The, it's coming from each other a lot of the times. Yeah. And you hear people, I mean, for goodness sake, I've been in so many conversations where, and, and I know you can agree with me on this, where people will say, well, you know, I, I mean, y'all can say whatever y'all want about white people, but they have been my best customers, yeah. or they have treated me the best. Oh, yeah. Or, you know what I mean? Yeah. You hear that a lot. Oh, as, yeah. <laughs> Especially with people who are in business or people who have gotten to a certain level in their life. Yeah. You know what I mean? The people who have helped me or pushed me has been people who don't look like me. Yeah. The people who try to pull me down have been people who, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. We have to really work on changing that narrative mm. because it's not a good one. Mm. I think just like how we put our heads down when a black person does something that's embarrassing, mm -hmm. I think we are to lift our heads up when some when a black person, and I see it more and more, and I'm happy about it because these people are spreading that. Yeah. Like, oh, look at this black girl doing this, or look at it. Like, I so love that. Let's celebrate each other. Yeah, and I'm wondering, I'm sitting here wondering, why do we do that? Why do we, why do we... Um. Pass on all the um, good accolades. Well, we're so willing to pass on the good accolades mm -hmm. to other cultures and other people besides ourselves. I think that's changing. When that's not necessarily the case. I mean, well, could it be the case for individuals? And then if it is, so if, if, if your um, experience has been black people don't support you, you black, and by, by black people don't never support me, but then if somebody else black, they, I, like me, I say all the time, I, I get support from black people all the time. I would have no business mm -hmm. if it wasn't for black people. Mm -hmm. So I don't know why your experience is the way mm -hmm. it is, but mine's is completely different. Mm -hmm. So what does that mean? Mm -hmm. What does that mean then? Does that mean that, you know what I'm saying, is that the individual that has the mm -hmm. issue? Mm -hmm. Could be. Yeah. Could be, could be something that they would, they need to look at. Mm. It could be also to the type of business they're in. Mm. You know what I mean? Like mm. all businesses are not the same. So their business may be one that black people are not up, like up on yet, yeah. just yet. You know what I'm saying? Or let's take relationships for example. Mm -hmm. Some black women will say, um, you know, white men treat me better. Yes. So yes. that's why, I, that's why I date white all women. All black men would say that, yeah. But then I think, I'm like, black men treat me nice. Yeah. Right. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I'm Why, right. are you having I'm, that? Why are you having all the bad And I'm love? glad you, you're bringing you know this up because that's an interesting point. So then it's like, okay, what are you experience? What are you? What have been your experience? Your Who are you surrounding experience. yourself with? 
who are you giving space to in your life? So and then it be, how are you thinking? How are you thinking? What are you attracting to that's your own right. self, right? right? So and and that's the self work that has yes. to be done. You that's know what right. I mean? That's the self work. So I'm glad that you brought that Absolutely. up because that's a real that's a real thing. It is a real yeah. thing. It is a real thing. Because issue. when people talk about these now, uh, and I don't want to play blind to what people are trying to, to point out because yeah. when people say, you know, black men do this or black women do that, right. like, yeah, they're talking about a certain part of the black population. Right. But and that's that, not the point. That. That's, the, that's, that's the part of the black population that I don't give space to in my life. Right. So there, I, right. I have another narrative right. to conquer that narrative and that's what to I say that it's not all bleak. Right. You know what I mean? Because that's not to say that I haven't had some bad experiences with exactly. black men. Exactly. That's the, you know what I'm saying? Exactly. But it's overall and in general, or I take that as learning experiences. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't take that as all black. Now I'm in the pool of all black men. Mm -hmm. It's like, okay, well, I see now that I have to be careful and watch myself yeah. in this type of situation. Mm -hmm. So let me not even do that no more mm -hmm. and do something different. But again, I think it all falls back to the self. I think a lot of times we we look for the answers outside of ourselves. Exactly. And try to fix the problems exactly. by making by somebody else change. Yeah. As opposed to, to us. ourselves. Yeah. Good point. Yeah. And that, and then, you know, and so when other people don't change. <laughs> it's everybody. We, it's not we us. We curse them. We curse there them. There you go. <laughs> I, I want to, unless you want to say something more on that, I wanted to add, um, um, I'm trying to see if anybody else had anything on the stream to talk about. Um, child sex abuse and pedophilia. Mm. Is that generational? Is that a generational curse? Mm. Mm -hmm. Is that a pattern that co goes through the line in family? Or it could be, but I'm, since we're talking about black people, I am going to say the pattern is the secrecy around it. Mm. Mm. We don't air family dirty laundry. Mm. That is us. Mm. That is black people. Mm -hmm. That is what we teach mm. in our households. Mm -hmm. So I, even though I might not, because there are some incestuous families where incest is just a Rampant. thing. It just, it's a generational thing, yes. Okay. Right? And then we, we have black families where even though it's not, um, incestuous, like it's not, they're not plagued by, by it. Like the, it may have been something that have happened in the family and it wasn't properly addressed. It was mm -hmm. kind of pushed. Now that's more common than anything else. The secrecy around child abuse. You said, you think the secrecy is more common than the, uh, than the abusers? The no, no, no. I say we, we, when I say more common, I mean, when I was put to, uh, in reference to incest, yeah. right? So you could have a, a, a friend of the family, right? Yeah. Who's not a family, but mm -hmm. there's a friend. Yeah. And they molested a, 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 a child. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I think what causes the patterns is the secrecy oh, around it. Our you. inability or failure to I address see. it is you. where it creates, because now we have a child who was sexually abused who now is an adult victimizing other children because they, the adults around them, when they were a child being abused, failed to protect them and failed to address the perpetrator wow. and failed you. to even discuss the abuse. Wow. The secrecy is what keeps it. Wow. That's what I think. So we actually harming our own selves and our own children by being hush-hush about it. Absolutely. Wow. Absolutely, because we, all of us are... The, that individual is not the only person that's affected by the abuse. Mm -hmm. When abuse happens, it affects the entire family, whether it's talked about or not. It's like a cancer. It's like a virus in the family. So whether you acknowledge this virus eating your body out or not, it's there, it's there still eating your body out. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. one day you will have to address it. Yeah. Because what's in the inside is going to eventually manifest on the outside. Always. Right. So when are you going to address it? When you see your skin falling off your face? <laughs> right. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. And that and, and sadly that's usually when it when it um when it's addressed, when we, when it hits the climax, when it's erupted to a point where it becomes uncontrollable. I just heard uh recently where they said that um 
that's a that's a big part of weight of uh, mm -hmm. obesity. They said they linked obesity back to wow, child sexual, sexual abuse. abuse. Yeah, I, like, wow. I read that too. Yeah. Which would make sense to it me. It makes sense. Because it's like you're eating, trying to eat away the thoughts and yeah. the, the pain, uh -huh. and the, you know. But, yeah, and I feel you, and that's heavy. But I'm wondering if um, some a child that's been sexually abused and grows up to be an abuser, is that, is, that a, is that the pattern? Or does a child who never been abused wake up one day and say, oh, you know what, I'm a molested six-year-old girl? Or is, does it stem from previous DNA? Mm, DNA. I think I have fought, you, I think the majority of people who prey um, on children who are perpetrators of sexual abuse have been abused. Right. Majority of the cases. Right. And that's what we want to talk about. Because right. you might find five people who that doesn't apply to. Right. Just like we like that's right. what like the homosexuality piece where people talk about that and say, oh, something happened. I'm like, no, that's not all the cases. Right. 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 So I feel like, but majority yeah. of the cases of people who come, who do sexual when you talk to them, they themselves, and by the way, it's usually abuse that was never addressed. It's mm. usually abuse because abuse that, are, that is addressed where people, the parents stepped up, something was happened to that person, they were jailed, yeah. there was therapy involved. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You don't yeah. see a repeat. Yeah. It's usually sexual abuse that was not addressed. And it makes sense because like you said, I mean, first of all, you're stopping it. Yes. And then if, if the secrecy is there, then you, you know, the abuse, the abuse continues. Mm -hmm. So it's like the more, it's like anything else. The more you drink, the more uh, likely you become alcoholic. Mm -hmm. The more abuse you take in, that type of abuse, I would think the greater chances you have of being an abuser yourself mm -hmm. because it becomes a pattern. Right. It right. becomes a pattern. Right. Is this generational? I mean, or is this like part of the ma'afa, you think? I think it, I think, like I said, I think what's, what's generational is our failure to address it. Mm. <laughs> Honestly. Mm -hmm. I mean, you can go as way back, as way back as, you know, where people is like, oh, well, that happened to me and I was told to get over it. Yeah. Grandparents, great grandparents, yeah. you could talk to. Yeah. And you find that that's been a thing. Yeah. So it's not the abuse itself. I think it's the secrecy around it. Wow. Yeah. Um, go ahead. Go ahead. No, I was just going to go on into um, yeah, cause we almost, solutions. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Um, solutions I, to breaking generational patterns and cycles. Yeah. Um, I per, from my own experience, um, I think you have to first acknowledge it. I think we have to first acknowledge it. I think the idea of painting picture perfect families is done with. Mm. I think we have to let go of it. I, mm. I think we have to, this is the thing, with, with, and, and I, I'm going to speak as far as mothers and fathers, but particularly mothers because majority of black people are being raised in single parent households, right? Right. I think that what helped me, there's my mother, Mommy, and then there's my mother, Lynette Rogers. Mm. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. There is a difference, mm. and the difference is my perception of both. Mm. The difference is how I perceive the role of both. Lynette Rogers is a person, a woman, with her own experiences. M mommy is the, the woman, mommy, that raised me, that fed me, that clawed me, yeah. right? Yeah. I think we need to talk to our parents. Yeah. And we need to know them outside of their mommy roles. To get the story. Exactly. And we don't know the story. Yeah. We know what happened to us yeah. at the hands of them, yeah. but we do not know their stories. Yeah. And I think once you can humanize your parents, that's a part of breaking cycles. Mm. Understanding that they did the best with what they have. Yeah. And you must do the best with what you have. And you must do your best to acquire more than you were given. Good teacher. Yeah, because what happens when you do that, when you, ha okay, when you take time to have the conversations, you're able to put the pieces of the puzzle together. Yes. So you're like, oh, now I get yes. why you did it this way. Yes. 
and oh yes. now I see how why it turned out that way. Yes. So you're able to then the puzzle yes. becomes clearer for yes. you. And you could take that information and like, well I know that this is a pattern. Yes. In the family. Because yes. then you can go back to her parents. Yes. You get that information yes. and a lot of times we can't get that information because a lot of the grandparents and greats have, have passed gone on, on yeah. but the mama has the information yes. of how she or, was raised. Or the auntie. And you can start mm -hmm. putting the patterns together, the yes. pieces of the puzzle together yes. to form the patterns. Yes. And now here's you. Yes. You're like, oh, okay, so great grand grand and my mother did it this way. Yes. And it's been dysfunctional. It ain't been helpful. Mm -hmm. I need to do something different. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Exactly. And that's what I was going to say. Another thing is recognizing that it's not working. Yeah. It's not working. Yeah. It's not working. It, th there's no one size fit all to parenting. Right. And so what worked for my great grandmother and even my mother yeah. may not work for my children. Right. And so I need to start working on acquiring a little bit more tools. Not saying I dash away or I throw away everything right. that I was given, right. you know. Um, but it, the first thing is acknowledging yeah. that this thing is a cycle. Yeah. Like in my family, uh, I think our cousins and I, a, a time back, was acknowledging that teen pregnancy. Mm, cycle. That was, that's a cycle in my own yes. family. Acknowledging that. And then getting to the root of why. That, that, why, why is this happening? And then once you can see that, then you can address it, and then you can deal with it. You know what I mean? Yes. I think a big part of breaking cycles is telling the truth to yourself. Yeah, that's real talk. Yeah. That's real talk. Yeah. Because that's a, that's a direct example of what's, what ha took place in my own family. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. My mother, her mother, yep. me, yep. my sister. Yep. You know what I'm saying? Yep. So, yeah. Yep. And, then having, and, and then watching our children. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Like even with my own, my daughter, she's 22. Mm -hmm. She had a child at 22. Mm -hmm. Um, but still recognizing patterns within the family. Yeah, it's deep. Yeah, it's, yeah. Deep. it's deep. Um, yeah. I say study yourself. Yeah. Yeah, I say study yourself. But that, but you, you won't even know how to do that until you learn how to recognize the signs. I think that comes first. You know what I'm saying? To recognize the signs and then able to attribute those signs mm -hmm. to yourself. I, I think that a lot, we hear a lot about loving ourselves, right, mm -hmm. of late. Yeah. We talk a lot about that. And I, I, I would say beyond loving yourself, be patient yeah. with yourself yeah. as it pertains to breaking cycles. Because just know there are going to be times you are going to revert back to what you know, yeah. as unhealthy as it may be. So be patient cycle. with yourself. Yeah. Yeah. Good stuff. yeah. Yeah. And I think the language is key too. The language we tell ourselves. Mm -hmm. So if we say things like, "Oh well, I, 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 that's just who I am," mm. I'm, I, you know, so that's always we start been. owning things. Yeah. You, you, when you talk like that, you cut off any avenue for change. Yes. Yes. You stop your own growth yeah. when you talk like that. Yeah. So I think we should be cognizant. That's why the words are so of how important. We, how we speak about ourselves. Yeah. Correct. Correct. Yeah, yeah. Even around health. Right. Well, that's in my family. You know what I mean? Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Well, family, that has been our Empower Hour. Um, we appreciate you guys chiming in and, and all your comments. Um, oh, I did have... Um, um, Robin, she just said, Robin said, Robin Taylor, there's no such thing as generational curses. There is such a thing as generational behavior and DNA being passed down from generation mm -hmm. to generation. Any other label such as curse is nothing more than spookism. Mm -hmm. I wanted to get her point in. Mm -hmm. Crystal said, Crystal Denise, I've learned it's not curses, more like bad habits, actions that are passed down. Patterns. But again, yeah. I think we're yeah. all saying the same yeah. thing. Yeah. Yeah. All right, family, take care. Until next week, take care of each other out there. All right, peace.